it is my pleasure to welcome in Jesse of 10 years. How are you doing, man? Pretty good, man. How are you doing? I am well. It's been a few years since we chatted, but always a fan. Happy to follow you and uh, excited about this new album, Violent Allies. We're, we're very lucky to have even finished recording it. We, we finished, we finalized recording at the end of February. So little did we know it was coming. <laughs> right. Oh, how, how, you couldn't know. Um, no one knew because we were being, uh, you know, it was hidden from us, basically. Or yeah. we kept in the, it's not that big a deal. It'll be gone. I Even once it hit and we understood the severity, I personally, I thought by now, I was like, it's got to be over by now, right? Our whole lives revolve around going out and doing shows and you guys going on tour. and Yeah. Ooh, hard. It's hard. It's definitely leveled the playing field, that's for sure. <laughs> Of course, and I'm glad you mentioned that. But first and foremost, I, I like to start these things with a little bit of a check, and I hope you're well, you're, the band is well, your families and loved ones are well and safe. It's insane out there, and there's a lot of, there's viruses out there, and there's a lot of political unrest, so I just want to make sure like you're good in the world right now before we start talking about art and rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, well, personally, yes, I'm, I'm great because I mentioned earlier when we were uh, just getting together, I'm, I'm a bit of a technological caveman so I could have caught up and learned but part of me just wants to stay kind of ignorant to all the the chaos and the mess that is swimming around at fast-paced media so I, I try to turn a blind eye to that and just stay in my own little bubble. I got you it's important to um, I think we're losing a little bit of the, the like we're not selfish if we take care of ourselves it's important to put yourself yeah, you know yeah. in a position to succeed personally yeah. Mental health is equally as important as physical health. And I think that it's just now starting to be really um, noticed or, or addressed more so than ever. So, Yeah, tough time in the world, but thank you for getting this record out. Glad you got to make, finish this big in this record. Uh, and, and also, you know, just uh, what a really, you know, you, you've always, I think the band has always, uh, you know, strived to make every record individual and different you know it's you have a sound and it's your band and it's your voice but i like that this record's got like different i'm hearing like not totally radical but like new yeah. things incorporated some arrangement things that i really liked a lot, a lot more electronics to the fore which i think yeah. gives the, yeah. the like a lot of flavor and then when you guys come in with like riffs or a very catchy chorus it's really punctuates you know so i love that well i mean i think that that's kind of the it shows a little bit of even the album title being called Violent Allies. It, the reason that it's called that is because we realized at some point that we as individuals, the musicians in the band, uh, are individuals and have drastically different opinions. But we have to realize that through the fight that it's necessary to have our opinions, but eventually come together as allies. And, and it makes a better result. And I think that what you just said, you're hearing that come through on this album because everyone has their own personal taste. And for instance, with the, the little more programmy or, or uh, different soundscapes is, is our guitar player, Matt. He, he's a great guitar player, but he loves to write on everything besides a guitar. So it, he, he has to shine through in some way with that. I love it. And very sounds like every guitar player I've ever known or played with. So for, of course, yeah. I'll solo with everything. Watch me with a spoon and a triangle. Um, <laughs> I'll make an instrument out of it. Um, but yeah, man, and, and of course, you know, there's a lot of great bands and a lot of great singers, but I love the storytelling. It's always been a, a hallmark of the band. You know, over 10 years, I've followed the band. And uh, since you guys kind of broke through and uh, I love this, there's like just great lyrics and great just, I don't know if it's, it's me personally, and I'm getting very emo as I get older, but there's a lot of compelling stuff here. You know, The Shift, The Unknown, yeah. Deja Vu, some personal stuff like Without You, um, you know, Sleep in the Fire. I mean, like very personal sounding stuff. Are you, before, obviously you couldn't know what the world was going to be like when you wrote this record, but like, were you going through stuff? Did the, was the band going through stuff that kind of colored this experience? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that the reason each album is drastically different is because we're in a different period in our lives and we're different people. You go back and reflect on when you're a teenager or when you're in your 20s and you're kind of like, wow, that was, I'm not that way at all anymore. So as we grow, you, at least we try to hang on to being honest to who we are now in the moment. So when it comes to the lyrical content on this one in particular, um, the inspiration definitely comes from uh, just 
life. I know it might seem as a very blanket generic statement, but like humanity and life and just like something like the shift is from observation. I had no idea that we were going to have a world pandemic. I couldn't Nostradamus that, but um, it, it just, that song really, it was a, it was our personal like band favorite when we were making the demos, but after we got finished with it and then all this stuff happened, we were like, Whoa, how relevant is this? It's crazy. And then Brian made the joke. It's like, well, you're always talking about some level of doomsday lyrics. So they finally apply. <laughs> so that's kind of how I predicted that one. I was, I guess I've been talking about it forever. I think it's the curse of all rock and metal bands. We kind of uh, wish this on ourselves this year yeah. uh, in a way, not really, but uh, I think also on the, on the plus side, even if you want to be a little bit of, you know, give a warning sometimes with your songs and you have in the past, there's a couple of ones that are like, wake up, it's dire. But I, I, do, I do feel overall, this record's kind of uplifting in the end, yeah. like kind of yeah. like our life is, we're going to be okay. And I think that's the message of this record is, you know, we can pull together. I, at least that's what I got out of it. I feel like we're going to, like it's, it's saying that we're going to be all right. That's definitely, um, I mean, the reason we released the three songs we released is because the shift is very much a warning, a warning or wake up and then followed by the unknown. Those two songs are even in chronological order on the album because it's a story. If you put both of those songs together lyrically, it's a story like the, the first line of the unknown is how did we end up here sifting through our own ashes? Our fires burn brighter, but we're a beautiful, we were a beautiful disaster. And then it goes into the chorus where time moves on and carries us past anything we can know. So it's just like, just hang in there. You know, life goes on. It, it the stuff that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's really what those two songs beside each other definitely um, were telling, I guess, both ends of it. Nice. Nice. Um, I also love the, uh, I just have to shout out the instrumental. I listened to it like a bunch in a row. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Planets three, it's very ominous, but it's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, is that something you guys worked on? Is that a, a you know, I know um, we've had little movements and intros and things yeah. before, so it's not new. We've always done it because we come from the old school of creating albums versus just songs and filler around them. So it's very difficult to, to completely depart from that structure. So the reason they're called planets three and four is for all the diehards that have been following us forever. We had a planets one and two on our sophomore record division. So it's, we kind of sprinkled that back in there for people that are paying attention this many years later that these musical pieces were like, we'll just keep them. It's like with nine inch nails calling everything halos, you know? So it, it, it is, it's nice within the context of the album to have musical breaks where it's just kind of sets, sets the tone, you know? Nice. Maybe there's a future, uh, like the, uh, the Nine Inch Nails ghost out. Maybe there's a future instrumental uh, trip out psychedelic album that we haven't got yet from the band. There, we definitely have enough material to do that. So Awesome. I love to hear that. But uh, yeah, man, I like, I like the record. And you know, it's funny, our very first interview, I think back to it, it's a long time ago, but like streaming was just beginning its boom when we first talked. And it's funny that you mentioned albums, because I do feel like on one hand, I love the availability of music, but on the other hand, it's like people don't appreciate albums. They love, I think we're getting geared towards singles and smaller releases, which may be actually practical. But I do like that you guys put an emphasis on like sequencing and the, you know, say goodbye is the last song. It feels yeah. like an ending. Like, yeah. you know, I like that. You, it's something you guys seem to care about. Yeah, old, old habits die hard. And I mean, we definitely grew up on being influenced by the structure of the album. But we have to adapt with everything. And you, you briefly touched on it, doing the EPs and, and shorter things might be better in the long run. And we as, as musicians are starting to think that is probably better to do just to keep engagement and keep relevant because the intention span with with the power of all the internet and everything going on um it's it you have to constantly be creating new content new content new content and for a, a band to create a, a 12 song record it doesn't just happen in a matter of weeks or, or it, it takes it, you know, we, it can take a year or more. Or it just depends on the album. So sometimes I think it, it does help to the EP format where you have a couple of songs that you intend to be singles and you have a couple more around them. But I also think it's a nice trick to do that where 
you do a couple or two or three of them and then it the culmination makes an album like uh Chino had a side project called Crosses where that's a great example of that where he there were three or four songs here and there and at the end it was all one album so I like we're hoping we get to do that that'd be killer yeah I, I'm so excited for Deftones I'm sure you are too oh yeah of course like, it's gonna be an event you know it always is it always yeah. is the first song is awesome. It's like, of course, of course it's awesome. Well, how else would it not be? Um, it's, very I would say, <laughs> it's very Deftones. It's very mm -hmm. Deftones. I, I would say also for you guys, I love that you, you know, the band is able to do videos and like, you know, the singles have meaning. So yeah. I like that. That's a, another element. Uh, the visual aspect, so few bands um, pull it off well. And it's not about money because I've seen bands with no budget do a complete DIY video at home during the pandemic that looked like, a Hollywood production, but you guys have always put an emphasis yeah. on really making videos. They weren't like too on the nose with the lyrics, but they were connecting. And I like, yeah, that. yeah. I mean, from, from an artistic aspect, I, I really enjoy um, creating the visual side of things or being involved with it. it. The only time it ever becomes a little bit of a drudgery or, or not as fun is when you have the constraints of the label wanting something to be a certain way. And it, it they don't, they don't see your vision so there's always that struggle but um we've been fortunate to for the most part make videos we're proud of nice do you guys get to collaborate and choose directors sometimes or is that sort of a split between the label and you it, it, it's it's definitely a compromise between us and sometimes we come in with a full-on planned out idea and then that allows us to have a little more of a direction to present to them and then other times people will just send in treatments of what they feel like the song is, which is also kind of refreshing sometimes to see someone else's perspective. But ultimately we get to decide what we think marries to the music best. Nice, I like that. Um, obviously it's a weird time in the world. This is probably the first time in your whole career that you're not gonna be either at a record release show or on tour when the album drops, so I'm sorry. But uh, have you guys, you know, what are you guys, What's your interest or your feelings on streaming and streamed concerts and live streams? Uh, is that something you guys are going to continue to make use of? I know you're very connected with your fans. Yeah. Um, again, old dogs, new tricks. So our initial reaction is, is this feels sterile and awkward and uncomfortable and we don't like it. But at least we are advanced enough to have the technology to do these things. So the more we do them, the more comfortable we will be with them and the better we'll get at them. And seeing that we might be stuck in this position for a while, we might as well do this and embrace it and, and find fun in it and kind of reinvent the whole thing. And we love being in person and being on tour and going from city to city. And there's nothing like a live show, but at least we still have the means to do this. So we might as well embrace it. Right on. Do you, and you're a person, I've seen you get off the stage, jump in the crowd, yeah, pull yeah. the mic, hand the mic to fans. At what point are you going to feel comfortable doing the show you know how to do, you feel best capable of performing? Um, once the world is greenlit to go back to some level of normalcy, even though I don't think it ever will, I think it's kind of a wake up call for us to be aware of how fragile our system really is. But I, I have to, when it comes to a live show, there has to be that connection with the crowd. I've, I've never been great at um, being in on stages that are eight feet in the air and 20 feet away, it feels, or, or you know, television. That's why the streaming stuff's awkward for me because I feed on the crowd energy. I grew up going into dirty little bars and punk clubs and, and just like mind blown at, at just the whole experience, not just the band on stage, but the whole scenery of everything. So when we get back to performing, it'll, I'll probably be very quickly back to that. I might not be as much on people just for respect, you know, I don't want to be flying spit out of my mouth into people's faces, just fresh off of a world pandemic. <laughs> probably for the best, right. Uh, and I was going to say, I'm glad you said punk, because I was, in my mind, it was like, yeah, it's very punk. You guys are a band of the people. Yeah. You're very down to earth, not like rock star stuff, even though you are, rock, you know, can be considered, you know, a bit, you know, a pretty big band. It's uh, the job title, but I don't, it's, it's awkward. Yeah, it's not who you are, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, did you guys, did you, you were saying like a lot of punk clubs and rock and a lot of bars and dives coming up. Were there uh, early bands that inspired you to kind of become a singer or one particular uh, band? Yeah, I mean, um, I was going down memory lane the other day discussing stuff with uh, Brian and um, our guitar player and just thinking back, he was, he's the youngest of us and he was fibbing on his age and sneaking into clubs saying he was 18 when he was like 14. So it was a lot of um, local and regional bands that were very underground, but there were a few of them that just, it was orchestrated chaos. And it, it that kind of stuff would just, you know, stuff like Rancid and, and bands like that, that were just all over the place. I remember the first time I saw Dillinger's skate plan, my head blew up and, you know, like glass jaw, a lot of those types of, uh, you know, chaos with control. So that's awesome. I don't think people would necessarily go right to those two bands if uh, they were thinking about your style personally or the band, but that's awesome. And and nobody is one flavor of yeah. music, right? We were all, and I think that's the the bonus of streaming is that I think the variety, everybody now is sort of can sample everything and we, yeah. we're le hopefully less elitist in the future and more general and chill. <laughs> Well, music is, is emotion and it's, there's so many different emotions you can convey. And I, I kind of, the analogy I make is you, you don't want to just eat your favorite pizza your entire life. Sometimes a, a, a good salad's a good salad. So it's like when people say, I am only death metal, I'm, like, I'm sorry for you, man. There's a lot out there that's really cool if you'll just open your mind to it. Right on, right on. Uh, so we we were talking before the call there. I see your paintings behind you. Very lonely sax guy under a very abstract <laughs> lamppost and uh, very interesting stuff. I know you, you know you create art. And you want to talk a little bit about your what you've been working on during the pandemic or just in general? Yeah, I've actually been um, challenged by the the guys again. Brian has really been he he took over as a uh, the managerial position through all of this. So we've been very hands-on. We've kind of scaled back our entire business to where our other guitar player, Matt, has a screen printing shop where we do all our merchandise through. Brian's been the manager. And we are very involved with everything. So he, he came at me to um, make a, a special uh, group of art pieces for each song. To, and like come up with it so that's what I've been working on and um it's been challenging because I want to do the best I can do but I, I've got a few of them here I'll, hold on a second I'll crack I'll show you real quick. sneak peek first time all right this is exciting I might get in trouble for this but I don't care <laughs> um so these are all pieces for different songs and uh there's a 12 songs on the album so each one's a little different and like here's an example of one nice and that like this is for deja vu and then i like the depth in that one yeah um, this one's for the shift there's a little self-portrait there huh yeah you, all of us of there's a little bit of all of us in there i've been I, I started with our faces and then there's here's one for the unknown even though there's a glare. No, I got it. There we yeah. go. But yeah, stuff like that where what's going to happen is we're, we're making for the very first time, we've really, you know, being home and not touring allows us to be ambitious in other ways. And we're making a, a, a deluxe box with the vinyl, the CD, and all kinds of extra stuff. And it, those, those art pieces will be in there and lyric sheets and notes. And, and it really gives an insight to uh, the album so you you can really immerse yourself in it that's awesome and i'm sure the fans will appreciate that uh sound you know after like i said over a decade in the band you guys are still very diy i like that energy i think it's important to be lean and self-motivated and not depend on the industry that now we see the weaknesses in the business yeah so um maybe it'll help you guys continue the longevity well i mean it, it's very rewarding to when we're hands on to see like the fruits of our labor. And we found out the hard way that the more you rely on other people to do stuff for you, the further it's going to actually be from what you probably want. So the old saying, if you want it done right, do it yourself. That's kind of where we are as a band right now. And that's back to the violent allies. It's like, we've gone through a lot of, of struggle and fight and 
to overcome and realize how valuable it is to, to still come together and form like Voltron. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Um, yeah, man, that's a good place to stop. I, I really appreciate your being your candor and thanks for sharing that yeah. little sneak peek with us. That was really kind of you. And, uh, again, congratulations, uh, again, violent allies on one of my favorite labels mascot. We didn't get to talk about them, but shout out to mascot. They're doing a fabulous job. With you guys. They've really been a phenomenal roster, a ridiculous actual talent on that roster and um, very diverse and so yeah man congrats keep your head up i hope the next time i see your face it's in person brother awesome me too you, you stay well <laughs>